Good morning. Welcome to the live broadcast of FRC Oosberg. Thank you so much for tuning in to worship the Lord with us today, this morning. If we have any visitors out there, we're glad you could find us. If you have any questions or you didn't receive our weekly email and would like to, be sure to call the church office. Also, if you're saying, seeing this later because you couldn't find our live stream on Sunday mornings at 9 a.m., don't hesitate to call, and we'll get you connected. Even if that means getting you a DVD of our service, we can definitely make that possible. Uh, kids, we have another Wednesday night Bible class online. Um, so you'll, we will see you at 6 p.m. on the church YouTube page. Uh, if you'd like to request a song or have your parents um, message Mrs. Lori. And FRC's virtual youth gatherings, once again on this week, um, again with junior high being at 6.30 and the high schoolers being at 7.15. Uh, both youth groups will receive an email calendar invite um, across your Chromebooks. All right, and FRC will be participating with churches in our community and surrounding area in a day of fasting and prayer on April 24th. Don't be intimidated by this or quick to exclude yourself as you can make this day your own. Uh, please go to our church website and look for the Joel Fast so you can learn why and how to participate with that. FRC is seeking to help Sunny Ridge in Sheboygan because of the impact of COVID-19 in that facility. We are participating with Hingham Church to aid both residents and staff by donating items of need. Please see the inf more information and the list of items at the by looking at our bulletin announcements uh, sheet. And a correction to the email is that the next food vault distribution will be April 28th, as the 14th, of course, has already passed. And FRC is looking for a part-time custodian, and the details for that can be found in our bulletin announcements under our news tab of our website. And Consistory would like to thank uh, FRC for its faithful support of our ministry dur during and throughout this time so far. It is greatly appreciated and a witness to God's faithfulness. And lastly, we want to share with you an encouraging message from the General Secretary of the Reformed Church, Eddie Alleman. Friends, greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. A lot has changed about our world in the last two months, but our God remains the same. Weeks may have passed since you last walked into the doors of your church and worship face to face with your community of faith. To be sure, being the body of Christ looks and feels very different these days. But we serve a recent Lord. It was beautiful to celebrate Easter with RCA churches this weekend through Facebook Live and other uh, online worship experiences. But despite all the challenges that we're facing right now, we are called to be the church together. We're called to be the church together. The ministry of the Reformed Church in America looks and feels different right now, but it has not stopped. We have been carefully monitoring the COVID-19 pandemic and has been able to help and support our churches to face this difficult situation. Last week, our governing board, the General Synod Council, met to discuss General Synod 2020. And for the safety of our delegates and their families, and for the health of the Orange City community that was to host a Synod this year, the GSC decided to postpone June General Synod meeting until next year. We will miss gathering together. That's one of the rhythms of our life together. But now we can care best for each other by staying home. Please stay safe and be well. But many have asked what will happen with the work of the Vision 2020 team. The team was going to give its final report in June, but now the uh, Synod has been postponed. GSC also called a special session of General Synod that to take place this fall to consider the Vision 2020 team report. The team will release the report in June, so there will be several months for discernment before the special session takes place later this year. P 
please pray for our denomination in, in this important decision. Pray too for our pastors, congregations, missionaries, chaplains, colleges, and seminaries, and for all of those that are embodying the gospel in this challenging time. We are in this together, and our help is in the name of the Lord. I continue to keep you in my prayers. I continue to pray for you. Be at peace. God bless you. All right. And please be sure to read the rest of the bulletin so that you're up to date on everything going on here at FRC. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear God, thank you so much for bringing us together uh, this morning. We just ask that you would continually um, just be in our thoughts, in our minds as we continue um, to go about our days and our weeks, no matter how strange they may seem or different they may be, we know that your faithfulness to us is never changing. And so we just ask that uh, we be constantly reminded um, of how good you are to us and um, how you are always there for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Uh, in this time, it is especially good to remember and to worship uh, our God, who is our lighthouse, uh, that we can have confidence in that. Uh, we can turn to him for guidance. So we're going to sing uh, My Lighthouse this morning. Troubles 
there we go. Hey, kids, we would normally dismiss to hop at this time. We are going to throw it to our kids' time with Miss Lori. Here you go. Good morning. So glad to connect with you on this Sunday morning. Kids, I brought along a treasured toy that we have that was made by one of our church members, Jack Brill, today. And I think that this wooden toy kind of represents us during this crazy time of pandemic and safer at home. You probably can't see it at home, but this little guy is actually upside down and he's got a frown on his face. He's not looking so happy. It's kind of how we maybe feel during this time of safer at home. It's kind of like we play games, we might do a puzzle, read a book, watch some TV, spend a little time outside, and repeat. One day turns into the next, and the next, and the next, and the next. What if we used this crazy rare time that we have to turn to God? Older youth group kids, I think I heard Justin throw out a little, what he called a nugget to you on Wednesday night, encouraging you to do the same thing, to use this rare time we have to draw closer to our great big God. Families, I encourage you to have a prayer and devotion time after your meal time. Simply read a story around the table from the Bible or children's Bible, then sing a song that's familiar to everyone, even if it's as simple as, Jesus loves me, or God is so good. You can also use a resource that I'll show you at the end. When we do that, friends, when we turn away from our bad routines and turn towards God, we turn the upside down, right side up again, just like our toy. And again, you might not be able to see it, but this guy has a big smile on his face now. And if we turn this like this, we can see that it also drew us closer to our great big God. It's no coincidence that we end up like that when we draw closer to him. We have a joy that comes from deep down inside that brings about the smile like the guy on our wooden toy. We've got a resource for you as a church family to use starting today that you can use to journal your prayers together as a family. Doesn't matter if your family in your house is one or if it's eight. You can use this together during your special prayer time. You can have your prayer list, things that you're praying for, and your answered prayers. And we ask you to do this daily for the next 12 days. Families with kiddos, you've probably already received this in your church activity pack. Other families, these are available for you as well. You probably don't need the kids pack though, and they are also under the carport in the back. Kids, we really miss seeing you here, but I look forward to Wednesday night when we can connect again in our special time online. Have a great Sunday, everybody. Let's hear a word from God's word. Thank you, Lori. Uh, our word from God's word uh, also looks to point us toward uh, this neat event coming this Friday to our area, uh, a Joel fast uh, that Brian is going to be talking about later on um, in the service. Um, keep this verse in mind this week. Hebrews 4.16 let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. That's Hebrews 4, 16. It's these words from God's word that direct us each week uh, as we bring our requests of our congregation before God. He hears our prayers and he moves in powerful ways through the prayers of his people as we bring him our petitions. So let's do that together this morning. Lord God of all creation, we, we ask that you would begin to prepare our hearts 
in our minds for a time of community, fasting, and praying this coming Friday together with our area brothers and sisters that are in you, Lord, that in a united manner we would seek you in a genuine way that brings about change in our lives, that you would convict us of what those changes need to be. God, that it would bring us closer to you so that we would carry out your ways for your sake. Thank you that we can bring our cares and concerns before you boldly as the only all-powerful one who works for the good of those who love you. And so we ask, Lord, Lord, we ask for Morgan and Aaron to play, that their little one, God, would continue to develop according to your plan, that you would give them comfort and understanding in this time. We ask for your comfort and peace for Susie Horn and, uh, and her family in the passing of Tom. God, bring about your healing and thank you for the comfort you've brought Sandy Peters, who's at Haven Drive for rehab following her two strokes. Lord, also bring about healing and strength for Linda Vanderweely, as well as for E.J. Callow, and he awaits results from his PET scan and receives his next treatment on Tuesday. Lord, we pray for Gary Feldman as he anticipates starting treatment soon. Let him experience relief from his pain, and may the treatments be effective with minimal side effects. Lord, we also pray for Ruth Ann Dryers, that she would experience relief from her back pain, that Verla Westerbecky's chemo treatment on Monday would be effective and Jean Cole's treatment this week would go well. We continue to pray, God, for our government officials, for the doctors and the healthcare workers and the essential workers as they make decisions and care for people. Protect them as they care for us. We ask, Lord, that those who are isolated from family and friends in their homes or in care facilities, that they would know that you are near. God, give them patience and perseverance, and thank you for those that are able to care for them and, and stay connected to them in this time. Lord, we thank you for your providence in so many other ways that we can continue to remain connected to you in this season and to one another in spirit and in truth, which leads us to pray as you taught us to pray. Share this with me, church family. Our God, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We're gonna sing uh, a hymn, hymn number uh, 295, Revive Us Again. The, the word should be on the screen for you.
Good morning, church family. Uh, we are continuing our series, Messy People, Merciful God. Only we are done with the book of Judges. Um, we find God's people this morning in the prophecy of Joel uh, in a mess. I'll say more about that later. Um, but for our scripture lesson this morning, we're going to look at Joel chapter 1. Uh, beginning at verse 1, and then we will jump over to Joel chapter 2 and pick up at verse 12. Listen to God's word. <clears throat> the word of the Lord that came to Joel, son of Pethuel. Hear this, you elders. Listen, all who live in the land. Has anything like this ever happened in your days? or in the days of your ancestors. Tell it to your children, and let your children tell it to their children, and their children to the next generation. What the locust swarm has left, the great locusts have eaten. What the great lo locusts have left, the young locusts have eaten. What the young locusts have left, other locusts have eaten. Wake up, you drunkards, and weep. Wail, all you drinkers of wine. Wail because of the new wine, for it has been snatched from your lips. A nation has invaded my land, a mighty army without number. It has the teeth of a lion, the fangs of a lioness. It has laid waste my vines and ruined my fig trees. It has stripped off their bark and thrown it away, leaving their branches white. Mourn like a virgin in sackcloth, grieving for the betrothed of her youth. Grain offerings and drink offerings are cut off from the house of the Lord. The priests are in mourning, those who minister before the Lord. The fields are ruined. The ground is dried up. The grain is destroyed. The new wine is dried up. The olive oil fails. Despair, you farmers. Wail, you vine growers. Grieve for the wheat and the barley, because the harvest of the field is destroyed. The vine is dried up, and the fig tree is withered. The pomegranate, the palm, and the apple tree, all the trees of the field are dried up. Surely the people's joy is withered away. Put on sackcloth, you priests, and mourn. Wail, you who minister before the altar. Come, spend the night in sackcloth, you who minister before my God. For the grain offerings and drink offerings are withheld from the house of your God. Declare a holy fast. Call a sacred assembly. Summon the elders and all who live in the land to the house of the Lord your God and cry out to the Lord. And then we pick up in Joel chapter 2 at verse 12. Even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love. And he relents from sending calamity. Who knows? He may turn and relent and leave behind a blessing, grain offerings and drink offerings for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Declare a holy fast. Call a sacred assembly. Gather the people. Consecrate the assembly. Bring together the elders. Gather the children those nursing at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her chamber. Let the priests who minister before the Lord weep between the portico and the altar. Let them say, spare your people, Lord. Do not make your inheritance an object of scorn, a byword among the nations. Why should they say among the peoples? Where is their God? This ends the reading of God's word. The grass withers, the flower fades.
but the word of our God stands forever. Have you ever seen anything like this? These are truly historic days. We've not been here before, nor have our ancestors been here before. As I heard someone say recently, never in my life did I think I would find myself entering a bank wearing a mask. Now, that might sound kind of humorous, but it describes the dilemma that we're in in this day, and sometimes it takes a little humor because everywhere we turn, we're confronted with the news about COVID-19. Now, when I first moved to Wisconsin 20 plus years ago, I was struck by the prevalence of news about the Green Bay Packers. It seemed like no matter what news forecast, there was always something about the Packers. Today, I would love to hear news about the Packers. It would be good to hear almost anything besides the constant barrage of information about COVID-19. Let me bring you back to the prophecy of Joel that we read just a couple of minutes ago. Notice the question that Joel posed to his audience at the beginning of chapter 1. In verse 2, we read these words. Has anything like this ever happened in your days or in the days of your ancestors? He continues, tell it to your children and let your children tell it to their children and their children to the next generation. The historic event that Joel was speaking about was a severe plague of locusts. Now, from time to time in that part of the country, there are infestations of locusts. But this was an epic infestation of locusts. As we read through the scripture, it's like one wave of locusts after another came and came and came and just left destruction in its wake. And some suggested that it lasted for more than one growing season. And there just wasn't any food left to be found anywhere. Even the trees, the bark of the trees was eaten up by this infestation of locusts. On top of that, it's believed by some scholars that a, a drought followed that epic event. Imagine, because you'll have to imagine, imagine in our country if all the crops throughout our nation were destroyed. Now, from time to time, there are droughts, there are storms, sometimes even army worms or other uh, pests will devour some crops, and some farmers will uh, really be devastated by that. But never, never, never in our nation have we experienced anything like God's people were experiencing during the days of Joel. That situation called for mourning. In fact, Joel says that their priests were mourning. They were mourning because they didn't have anything to offer as sacrifices. What should have been a time of joy and celebration over harvest was a time of wailing and mourning and fasting. In fact, Joel calls them to lament to fast and to pray. Let me read again those words from 13, verses 13 and 14 of Joel chapter 1. Put on sackcloth, you priests, and mourn. Wail, you who minister before the altar. Come, spend the night in sackcloth, you who minister before my God. 
For the grain offerings and drink offerings are withheld from the house of your God. Declare a holy fast. Call a sacred assembly. Summon the elders and all who live in the land to the house of the Lord your God and cry out to the Lord. We read similar words in chapter 2, beginning at verse 17. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Declare a holy fast. Call a sacred assembly. Gather the people. Consecrate the assembly. Bring together the elders. Gather the children, those nursing at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and her bride, the, cha- the, ch- the bride, her chamber. Let the priests who minister before the Lord weep between the portico and the altar. Let them say, spare your people, Lord. Do not make your inheritance an object of scorn, a byword among the nations. In between those two passages, Joel calls God's people to return to him. We read in chapter 2, verses 12 to 14. Even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love. And he relents from sending calamity. Who knows? He may turn and relent and leave behind a blessing, grain offerings and drink offerings for the Lord your God. Notice how Joel describes God in those verses. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate slow to anger and abounding in love. And he relents from sending calamity. I don't know about you, but those words don't describe to me uh, a God that's vindictive. Rather, a God that is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in mercy, as Joel says. And he even leaves open the possibility that God might relent of the calamity that they're experiencing. Who knows? He may turn and relent and leave behind a blessing. You see, Joel doesn't blame God for the experience that his people are having. He maintains that God's gracious and compassionate, that he might even relent, and he suggests that God may even go so far as to leave behind a blessing. And then note what he calls God's people to do. Rend your heart, not your garments. Return to the Lord your God. Two things. First, rend your heart. Simply have a change of heart. Or since in that day the heart was believed to be the seat of thinking and emotions, today I think the translation would be change your mind. And then he says, return to the Lord your God. I think what he's saying basically in those two verses is repent. Turn from your selfishness, if you will, and instead turn to God. Notice in this call to mourn and fast and pray that he includes everyone. He begins, bring together the elders. They would be like the uh, public officials of the day, if you will. Gather the children, including those who are at their mother's breasts. In other words, mom, bring your babies with you. Bring all the children. And then it mentions specifically, let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her chamber. That would have been unprecedented. That would be like today saying to a young married couple who just are on their honeymoon, hey, you have to cut this all off. You have to come home. We have this sacred assembly. You have to be a part of this. You have to be a part of this. And then he says in verse 17, let the priests who minister before the Lord weep between the portico and the altar. 
This great day of fasting and prayer wasn't to be just for the leaders of the people. It included all people. One last thing about what Joel writes. In verse 17, he says, Do not make your inheritance an object of scorn, a byword among the nations. Why should they say among the peoples, where is their God? Why should they say among the peoples, where is their God? You see, in that day, there was an assumption that if a nation was suffering, especially if they were suffering at the hands of another nation, it was because their God or their gods were absent or simply ineffective. And so Joel is saying, God, uphold your honor. Think of what the nations are going to think about you if this continues. He also appeals to God on behalf of his people. Do not make your inheritance an object of scorn, a byword among the nations. I think what Joel might have been saying to God is, hey, God, remember this covenant that you have with your people. You have promised to be faithful to them. Do you want them to be, a, be scorned among the nations? What does all of this mean for us today? I would suggest to you that despite the fact that our situation today is different than the one that Joel addressed, it's still a very, very unusual situation that we find ourselves in today. As I mentioned earlier, we've not been here before. These are difficult days. There's a lot of uncertainty, and there's not the usual roadmap that we would follow in this situation. So where do we turn? Well, the praise team led us in singing Our Lighthouse this morning. I would suggest to you that it's our lighthouse, our God, that we need to turn to. In biblical times, like the time of Joel, when they were facing difficulty, they called forth a time of fasting and prayer. I believe these days, our situation today, calls for a time of fasting and praying. And I think it's somewhat unprecedented in that all the churches in our village and in Cedar Grove, Hingham, Gibbsville, I think there's even a church in Keele that is coming together to be a part of a day of fasting that will take place this Friday, April 24th. We're calling it the Joel Fast based on the passages of scripture that I shared with you this morning. And we're encouraging all of you to participate in some way in this day of fasting. Now, we realize that for many of you, Friday will be like any other day and that you have to work. But we can want to encourage you in some way to participate in this fast. Let me back up. Why, why fast? What is there about fasting? Well, put very simply, the purpose of fasting is to draw near to God. The intent of fasting, usually abstaining from food, is to realize that God is the source of all of life. And that's why fasting usually consists of eating food or abstaining from food as a way of being reminded that God is the source of all of life. We realize, however, that not everyone can fast from food. Some of us, myself included, have some health concerns 
that don't allow me to participate in a total fast. So I would encourage you, if you can't abstain totally from food, to consider some other options, like not eating certain kinds of food. Uh, maybe you'll abstain from chocolate that day, or sweets, or from caffeine, or alcoholic beverages. Those are just some possibilities. We encourage you to fast from something. Maybe it would be a great time to fast from our electronics. Ooh, that one would hit hard, right, with the younger generation? Think about that. Fasting from social media for a day, or television, or email, or videos. Keep in mind, the purpose that we fast is that so that we can feast, if you will, on God. And fasting in some way sets us up to feast on God, which is the real purpose of a fast. The question is, how do we go about feasting on God? Here's some suggestions for you. Uh, and by the way, these are all put together. Uh, if you saw the ad in the Lakeshore Weekly, you'll see these suggestions. They're all on our church website. They probably all will be sent out to you again this week. But one of the things that we can do is worship. Praise God. Listen to some praise music. Pray. Spend some time in prayer. And there's a lot of different ways we can pray. That prayer guideline gives you different uh, things to consider. Confession. Confessing before God things that have kept you from having a really solid relationship with him or with others. Lament. Lament. Uh, in biblical times, they, they literally wailed uh, over the loss of, that they were experiencing. And we're not so good at that, but maybe a time like this is a good time for us to lament, to be sorrowful, to be honest with God. God, I'm really struggling here. Or petition, praying for the needs of those around you. There's no shortage of needs that we can be praying for these days. And spend time praising God, thanking him, acknowledging that he's gracious and compassionate. Maybe you want to spend part of the day reading scripture. Maybe you'll even want to do a study of different times in the life of God's people where they took time to fast and pray. Or meditate. Simply spend time in quiet with God and listen to God. Hear what he might want to say to you. The idea is to do whatever works for you so that you can connect with God. That might even mean taking a walk or going for a run, but exercising not only your physical body, but exercising your spiritual muscles. The point is there isn't one right way to fast and pray. My encouragement to you would be to plan ahead, even to be creative. For those of you who are working, uh, if you're fasting, maybe take your lunch breaks or your lunch time as a time to pray and spend time alone with God. Maybe... Maybe you would even consider getting up an hour early that day just to spend some time alone with God. Do, again, whatever works for you, which might take some planning. Kids, we want to encourage you. In Joel's day, the children were included in that day of fasting. We want to encourage you to participate. Maybe that's a great day to use your prayer journal to go through your prayer list and to pray for others. And last but not least, we want you to watch. At the end of the day, there will be a video that's been put together, and that will be broadcast on Channel 14, uh, both at 5.30 and 7.30. There's also a Facebook group, but a video has been put together by a number of pastors 
And the idea is that we would all at least gather in that way at that time uh, to come together in this day of prayer and fasting. The question is, probably many of us are asking, what should we expect of that day? Specifically, what should we expect from God? How, how should we expect God's going to respond? I don't know. The reality is that we don't fast to change God. <laughs> the reality is that we fast to change ourselves. Maybe God will respond in some way that we can't think or imagine, but the reality is that we leave the results up to God, and we trust that God will do his part. Our part is to simply seek him. Please pray with me. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the encouragement that it is even in the midst of difficult days. Uh, the encouragement to seek you. And help us to do that with all our heart, all our soul, all our mind, with all our strength. Knowing that you are faithful, that you are gracious and compassionate. Thank you for that reminder. Thank you for your love for us. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Normally, during this time of the service, we would invite you to give your offerings. We still invite you to do that, but there's a, a different way of going about that. We encourage you to either go online and do that, send it in via mail, or drop it off at the church. And again, we thank you so much for your faithfulness in giving, especially uh, during this difficult time. So thank you. Father, we do acknowledge that all gifts come from you, and you have been so gracious to us. Thank you. Thank you for your faithfulness. Accept our gifts. Accept our lives as we offer them to you uh, as a, an aroma, a pleasing sacrifice to you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Leave this place today to go and be salt and light in the world. And as you go, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you both now and forevermore. Amen. Let's sing of how great and wonderful and worthy our God is. Worthy of every song we could ever
Again, I encourage you to go uh, to our bulletin uh, and go online to find uh, information about uh, the Joel Fastest Friday. And uh, it's got a great layout, how you can progress throughout the day, different things you can be praying for. Uh, let's do this together as a community that we would draw close to him, that he would open up our eyes, show us who he is and what he has for us, how he wants to change our hearts. Go and be blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.